Corbett, born on February 12, 1976, in Limerick, Ireland, came from a joyful family. His parents, John and Rita, raised a total of eight children, including Corbett and his twin brother, Wayne. Despite limited financial resources, Corbett's parents always ensured their children's well-being. In times of financial strain, Corbett even took on a part-time job as a school sports center security guard to support his family. Jason Corbett was a hardworking man loved by his family and friends, especially his wife Meg, whom he married in 2004. They had two children, Jack and Sarah, and their life was filled with happiness. However, tragedy struck in 2006 when Meg suffered a fatal asthma attack just three months after Sarah was born, leaving Jason a widower at 30, responsible for Jack and Sarah. Jason's loved ones offered support, but he decided to hire an au pair in 2008 to provide stability for his children. Molly Martins, 20 years old, misrepresented herself in her application, and she had a history of dishonesty. First, she lied about her university certification and then her qualification in foster care. And there is more. Molly was in a relationship with a guy named Kith before applying for the job. According to Kith, Molly had mental health problems and had just been discharged from a psychiatric hospital days before traveling to meet Jason. She broke up with Kith and cut ties with him just two weeks after she got to Ireland. Molly arrived in Ireland in March 2008, and initially, things went well. She cared for the kids, and her relationship with Jason became more intimate. However, tensions arose when Jason suggested she move out to slow their relationship, a plan Molly didn't follow. With time, their relationship deepened, leading to an engagement in 2011, and they moved to North Carolina. Molly continued her falsehoods, which included telling her friends in North Carolina about a made-up friendship with Meg before her death. Despite these issues, they seemed like a happy family with Molly as a devoted mother. Jason worked at a packaging plant, and they made friends in their new community. Yet underlying problems simmered in their marriage, including Molly's desire to adopt children, which Jason opposed due to relationship doubts. Jason contemplated divorce over time, considering returning to Ireland with the children. He voiced dissatisfaction with their relationship and hid their passports out of fear that Molly might take them. Jason, however, had his flaws, as audio recordings from their arguments revealed, showing a history of domestic violence. During one dinner, Molly intentionally provoked Jason, leading to a heated argument in front of their children. This exposed Jason's violent tendencies, which she recorded as evidence to give her lawyer in case of a divorce, so she could have custody of the kids. On the night of August 1, 2015, Molly's parents, Tom and Sharon, visited their family in North Carolina. The reason for their visit remained unclear. Later that night, Tom and Sharon surprised their grandchildren with gifts, a baseball bat for Jack and a tennis racket for Sarah. This choice of gifts would later become important. Around 3 a.m., Sarah had a nightmare and woke Molly up. Molly comforted her and put her back to bed, but when she returned to meet her husband, it led to an argument as Jason claimed he was disturbed from his sleep. Later, Tom, a former FBI agent, heard unusual sounds and intervened with the baseball bat. He saw Jason attempting to strangle Molly. This intervention escalated into a physical confrontation between Tom and Jason. Molly, fearing for her father's safety, joined in with a brick. Together, they subdued Jason until he was no longer a threat. When the police arrived, they found a violent scene with severe injuries to the now-dead Jason. Responders noticed that the blood on the brick and Jason's body had started to dry, suggesting a significant passage of time. His skull was fractured from behind, which means he did not face them, and the whole place was covered in Jason's blood. Molly, visibly distressed, showed no tears and occasionally touched her neck, citing discomfort from Jason's attempted strangulation. This incident initiated an extensive investigation into the circumstances surrounding this tragic event. 
However, conflicting accounts and debates persisted, making it challenging to uncover the complete truth. Notably, aside from a minor red mark on her throat, Molly had no other injuries, which also applied to Tom, despite his claim of a fierce struggle over the bat. Both were taken to the police station for statements and photographs. In her account, Molly asserted that she and her father had acted in self-defense, leading to Jason's death. She claimed that her husband was drunk that day and became highly agitated when awakened at night. Her recollection of events following the initial brick blow was hazy, but she strongly maintained that their actions were driven by self-defense. Molly claimed that she had endured years of abuse from her husband, but had remained silent, fearing the loss of custody of their children. However, the police investigation found no physical evidence supporting her claims of long-term abuse during her marriage to Jason. While audio recordings indicated Jason's volatile temper, they did not substantiate allegations of cruelty toward Molly. Tom's testimony aligned with his daughter's account, including Jason's intoxicated state that night. He also mentioned a false claim that Jason's previous wife had died under suspicious circumstances, a falsehood that cast suspicion on the case. In reality, May had died due to an asthma attack, a fact confirmed by medical professionals. Tracy, Jason's sister, confirmed her brother's intent to divorce Molly and return to Ireland with the children. Molly was aware of this plan, raising questions about whether it could have been a motive for the subsequent events. Upon learning of her brother's death, Tracy promptly traveled to the United States and met with detectives. She shared her doubts about the truth of Molly's account, sentiments that investigators also shared. Following Jason's death, a thorough investigation was initiated. Just a day after his death, a post-mortem examination revealed that Jason had succumbed to severe head injuries from blunt force trauma. His head bore multiple lacerations, abrasions and bruises, along with extensive skull fractures. The injuries were so severe that the medical examiner could not definitively determine the number of blows inflicted, but it was evident that he had sustained at least 12 strikes. Surprisingly, toxicological analysis revealed an unexpected twist in the narrative. Molly had alleged that Jason had been heavily drinking throughout the day, yet his blood alcohol content was negligible. Given his stature as a grown man weighing over 110 kilograms, he could not have been intoxicated during the alleged assault. Adding to the intrigue was the presence of traces of antidepressants in his system. Molly had been prescribed this medication a few days before Jason's death, and just days before, Jason had reported an unexplained burst of anger to his doctor. While this remains unconfirmed, Relatives of the deceased speculated that Molly may have secretly administered her medication to him. Many may be wondering about the well-being of Jack and Sarah during this tumultuous period. Well, both children were temporarily placed in the care of Molly's brother. On August 3rd, as the autopsy was underway, each child was interviewed by a social worker in hopes of shedding light on the enigmatic circumstances surrounding their parents' marriage. Jack and Sarah disclosed that their father was perpetually angry and had even harmed their mother. Did you see him physically? Um, once or twice. What did you see? Um, punching, hitting, pushing. With Molly's allegations corroborated by her children, the narrative of Jason's assault on his wife gained substantial credibility. Another significant detail emerged during conversations with Jack. It pertains to the brick that had been sitting on Molly's bedside table. The presence of a brick in a bedroom adjacent to the bed might raise eyebrows. Molly, however, provided an explanation that Jack later confirmed. They intended to paint the brick and place it outside the house as part of a creative endeavor. Apparently, Molly had brought the brick inside due to inclement weather. Nevertheless, one might contend that she could have placed it elsewhere, yet it ended up in the marital bedroom. Molly subsequently filed custody and guardianship documents for Jack and Sarah. Ultimately, the children were entrusted to Tracy and her husband, as stipulated in Jason's will. Tensions ran high between Molly's family and Jason's loved ones. Molly even barred her deceased spouse's relatives from attending the memorial service, going as far as hiring security to prevent their presence. 
Additionally, a dispute arose concerning Jason's burial arrangements. Molly insisted on immediate cremation, while her sister sought to repatriate Jason's remains to Ireland for burial. The latter was agreed upon, contingent on his sister covering all associated funeral expenses, which Tracy duly fulfilled. In a significant development, both Tom and Molly were arrested on December 18, 2015, facing charges of second-degree murder and negligent manslaughter. Notably, neither admitted guilt in this complex and contentious case. The joint trial was set for July 17, 2017. Before this, Molly gave an interview to a TV channel, restating her claims of Jason's abuse and her innocence in his death. However, Jack and Sarah, now older, withdrew their initial statements. They said their father wasn't violent, and they had been pressured into lying, adding complexity to the case. Both sides presented forensic evidence, such as crime scene photos, testimonies from responders and officers, and medical data to support the assertion of Jason Corbett's brutal killing. The prosecution brought in a bloodstain analyst who argued that the blood patterns didn't align with self-defense claims, suggesting the attack began with Tom and Molly striking Jason when he was defenseless. The prosecution highlighted Jason's $600,000 life insurance policy and his opposition to Molly adopting the children as motives for the crime. The defense painted Jason as an abusive husband and emphasized Molly's desire to adopt the children. They also leaned on Tom's testimony, portraying him as an honest man due to his FBI background. Molly chose not to present her own defense, which was a strategic move. The trial continued until August 9, 2017. After just three hours of deliberation, the jury returned a guilty verdict, resulting in 20 and 25 years prison sentences for the defendants. A week later, they filed an appeal, alleging jury misconduct notably of jurors' improper engagement with the press. On December 1, 2017, the appeal was rejected. They then turned to the Supreme Court of North Carolina and in early 2021, secured release on $200,000 bail each. Their retrial was initially set for June 2023, but was rescheduled to November 6, promising to be a high-profile trial. All right, guys, that wraps up our video for today. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more.